Hey, Cameron here with C Butters Tech, and today we're taking a look at the state of Windows on ARM devices. And the reason I'm doing this is we are on the cusp of a new uh, release of Surface devices, and those Surface devices may very well have a Snapdragon X Elite chip in them, which is said to be a real turning point for Windows on ARM. Um, and the reason I'm making this video is not because I want to, it's gonna feel like as I talk about these things that I'm very negative on Windows on ARM, but I am not, I'm not trying to be negative on Windows on ARM because I'm actually very excited for the future of it, but I wanna be very practical about Windows on ARM. And part of this is because I am excited to see what the performance will be on the new Snapdragon X Elite, what the compatibility, which is a major key thing, will be on the new Snapdragon X Elite. But uh, I've been very vocal um, when talking with people that right now with the Surface Pro 9 generation, that Snapdragon chip is probably not for most people. It does have a place, it, you know, current gen has a place. So we're going to talk current gen, but that doesn't mean I'm not excited for what's upcoming with new Windows on our devices. But I want to be practical and I can't review something that doesn't exist yet. Uh, but we'll be looking at it in the spring, summer, when this new device comes out and see what compatibility and performance looks like then. But right now, I'm going to show you what Windows on ARM looks like today. Uh, this is a Surface Pro 9 5G, which has the SQ3 Microsoft ARM CPU solution. But first, I'm just going to walk you through what my experience was. So I just purchased this as if I was a consumer who didn't know anything about processors and just tried to use it like I normally use my laptop uh, throughout the day and uh, and wanted to see where that took me. So I'm gonna guide you through my experience with the device first, and then we'll have some further conversation. The first thing I did obviously was turn it on, booted it up, very familiar form factor here, uh, loaded up Windows. First thing I noticed is I had me choose my region first, and then it just sat there and spun and spun and spun for about five minutes. And I quickly realized that it's up very slow um, to even just to install Windows. So that was my first experience, not a great start on things. So the next thing I did on the device was load up Minecraft, which this is a Microsoft device. You know, Microsoft pushing these ARM devices. You would think that Minecraft would actually work on these devices. But I installed the Microsoft Launcher and tried to play the Java version of Minecraft. Uh, the Xbox version of Minecraft does work on this machine. Uh, but if you, I generally play on a, a server in my own house with my kids and uh, we play Minecraft on a server and we do that pretty, pretty regularly. My daughter wanted to play. So I said, oh, well, this will probably be a, a <laughs> A nice opportunity to to try out the performance of maybe the 3D performance of this ARM chip. But alas, uh, using Microsoft's own launcher to get the Java version running uh, did not work. Uh, it looks like it's installing spins and then it gives an error. It doesn't really tell you why it's not working. Just doesn't work. So that was the first thing I tried to do on this machine. Uh, then a little bit after that, um, as you know, I've been sell I've been selling on my Shopify store some Surface fans to that to connect on the back to keep them cool. I uh, don't need it if you have the ARM version because it just doesn't get hot enough that that fan would make any difference. But if you have an Intel one, uh, those fans come handy. You can pick those up uh, on my channel. There's links everywhere. But uh, so the next thing I did was try to. Uh, you know, I had some orders coming through, so I decided, oh, I'll connect to my printer and just print some orders really quick. And lo and behold, I went through the, the driver setup, and I have a Canon multifunction printer that's not that old. It's it's five or six years old, maybe. Um, but there was no ARM driver, uh, so I just ran the Windows driver, hoping that emulation would save me here. And lo and behold, it look, also looked like it was doing something, but did not install the printer driver. And uh, it looked like it was going to work because it could see the printer on the network. But then it eventually threw an error and did not let me have a printer driver. So I can't play 
Minecraft Java, which by the way, works on like Raspberry Pis and like every device like ever in the last 10 years. Um, but it does not work on the ARM Windows Microsoft first party. So that's like very surprising and really dumb actually, because Microsoft could really fix that really quickly. Um, so I don't know why they don't do that for this device. Um, anyways, that just blows my mind that that is something that doesn't work. Picture driver doesn't work. Uh, so the next thing I try to do, well, I know that, uh, supposedly emulation will, will work with some games. So I went ahead and I've been playing persona three reload and, uh, I figured, oh, well, maybe I can load that up. It's not a very intensive graphically game. I've run it on my Steam Deck at like 90 frames a second. So it's really not an intensive game. It is like a triple A new game, but it's not graphically intensive at all. And you know, it's probably, it's barely 3D almost. Um, but I decided I'd download that and see how that would go. And lo and behold, that did not work either. Um, kind of looked like it was gonna do something, but then it didn't. So it turns out there are a couple of games that will work, but anything that is Vulcan based is just not gonna work on this machine, um, which is surprising. And there's been a lot of work to make Windows games compatible across many, many devices that uh, we've seen with the Steam Deck, but that's not, that's not here. Um, so I did try to do a few other things on the machine. And uh, one thing I did do was I played with the camera a little bit and that seemed to actually work really well. The studio effects that, that, it, that it used um, seemed very, I mean, as good as Intel and potentially it didn't smooth it. I didn't see any like start. Once the camera like turned on, it was on. Sometimes I'm until you see a tiny bit of a stutter and then it kind of kicks in. A lot of times the facial recognition, when you turn it on, on the Intel device will, I'm sure if you, you guys have experienced this. If you have experience with services, you'll turn it on and it'll sit there and try to read your face. And then it just says, I can't tell who you are. And you just think, why can't they make this work? This is like the most basic thing. Um, I've not seen this ARM version do that. So maybe the software stack of the cameras is just that much better. Um, so that was a plus for the, the arm side of things. Um, again, it did not get hot at all in normal kind of web browsing usage, video usage. Uh, but what I did notice was there was lag and what I mean by lag is, you know, that YouTube studio, if you ever go on the back end of, of your YouTube account. And you play around in those menus. Some of them could be fairly intensive. There's some graphs and charts going on there. Just uh, running my mouse over the different uh, items in there and switching between pages, there was a not, I might not say massive delay, but very noticeable delay using this device uh, just to navigate web pages. It just felt slow, slow like molasses. And, um, I don't know what to attribute that to. I've heard a lot of people say that, you know, supposedly this is I-5 class um, in performance, but I've got a Surface Go that doesn't even have Intel I-5 class CPU in it, and it feels faster than this device uh, straight up. So the people who are saying that you know, maybe there's a few benchmarks where bench is close to an i5, maybe, but in general, the usage of Windows on ARM, this is not a fast machine. And anyone who tells you otherwise, I think either hasn't used a modern Intel Surface device because they're so obsessed with ARM, uh, but it feels slow. And not only that, but I did have lots of hangups and lockups, uh, even downloading things in Steam. I would suddenly, it was suddenly kind of like just ratchet down and stop downloading. I've, and I'm, I'm literally 20 feet away from my, from my wireless access point. And I had no issues with any other device on downloading, you know, a 20 gigabyte game, but on this machine, it was taking a very long time. And I don't know what to attribute that to, but all in all, like, I, I mean, I tried to give this a shot.
And you and you may be sitting there thinking like, well, you're, why are you trying to use this as a gaming device? It's not a gaming device. And what I'll say is you're absolutely right. It's not a gaming device, but there's also a difference between having a computer that's not a gaming PC and having a computer that can't play Minecraft, Java, and Roblox, and it costs a thousand plus dollars. That's that's the kind of utility that it's like. Who would want? Who would want? Who would want to block this? And I get it. I get it. If you're just using Microsoft apps, you're in a work environment. Maybe you remote desktop into work, and even if you're not remote test desktoping into work, the Office Suite runs perfectly fine. Teams runs fine. Multimedia runs fine. Uh, no issues with that. Uh, I will say it does feel a lot slower when you're doing comparable things and the browser feels slower doing comparable things. But, you know, other than other than that, like if you want to do the things that consumers want to do, there, it's just it is not a practical device. If if you just if you just work and type and work in Excel, and Outlook, and you're responding to emails, and you watch videos, great device. Uh, if you're only going to use, well, I can't even say that. I was going to say if you only use the Microsoft apps on the store, but even that isn't the case because Microsoft, Microsoft's own first-party titles don't work. Um, so, yeah, I'm not impressed, and I get it. My use case is very oriented to things that maybe, you know, I'm very... I'm very oriented to, I, you know, I, I've loved Surface for so long. My kids have Surface devices and I could not, absolutely not see handing them this device because the second I did, they would hand it right back to me and be like, what do you, this doesn't work. I can't print on it. I can't, I can't do anything on this machine. 60% of what I do, I can't do. So right now, this the state of Windows on ARM, in this generation uh, that we haven't cried and right is Surface Pro 10. But it's, for me, it's just a total no-go. And I'm very vocal on that. And I get pushed back on that from lots of Reddit users. But the way I use the device, and, and here's the thing, I'm not saying that it isn't great for some people. If you vetted your software stack and you know it works, then that's how you want to do, you are going to get amazing battery life on this machine. But if, you wanted if there's just you know one or two things that you wanted to do on your computer that you now can't. To me, that's that's worth, you know, plugging into the charger, an hour earlier than you would have earlier, and it's probably more than that. Um, because battery life has been really good on this, uh, Sitch battery, and that's a great thing. It's an all day battery life, and uh, that's always been a thing that people complain about. I'm lucky enough that I'm always very close to outlets uh, at my job and at at home. So, you know, when I have portable battery banks that are very small but hold a lot of power. So, yeah, I, I guess I could never be a proponent of giving up so much compatibility and so much potential performance for a little bit of extra battery life. And what I would say, like, literally, if you wanted to get the same amount of battery life out of your Intel as this, you may as well limit it in the performance mode, limit, <laughs> limit your Intel surface to like seven to 10 watts and put it on battery saver mode. And you still would retain all of that compatibility with pretty comparable battery life to the ARM version. Um, I would say I can't bet that, but I just know from a from a power perspective, I've seen that this pulls about 15 watts when you're just kind of hanging out on there. If you limited your Intel and disabled all the performance modes on it, limited the watts using throttle stop or something, that may be a little too advanced for people. But if you limited it to the same amount of wattage and it has the exact same battery, you would get the exact same battery life. So, uh, yeah, like retain all your compatibility and just clap down your, your Intel CPU and keep all your compatibility would be my recommendation <laughs> from C Butters tech when is on arm for this generation, current generation and backwards, definitely can't recommend it. Uh, 
Surface Pro 10 upcoming, I'm going to vet it. I There's been a lot of people talking about the Snapdragon X Elite and how it's going to, you know, the emulation is going to be so fast and it'll be so fast that the fact that things are emulated don't even matter uh, anymore. And it, the performance is going to be crazy good. And the CEOs of Qualcomm said that, you know, compatibility is going to be great on most things. So uh, I hear all that. I just want to see it before I start recommending to everyone, like hold off your purchases until this comes out. Because how can you say that when there's no, there's no real data on that? Uh, you know, I don't know. Uh, I just, uh, I just think I'm excited for what that's going to be. And I'm definitely going to test it. But I need to see something, have real benchmarks other than, you know, the few things that the company slid out. It needs real in the field vetting before I'm going to say Surface Pro 10 Consumer Edition ARM is going to be the best thing ever. You should buy it right now or not buy something because you're going to buy it later. Like, I'm not going to say that to anyone until I can vet that for myself or have actual third party reviewers have the device. So I think everyone needs to chill a little bit on the Snapdragon stuff. Like, yes, we're excited, but making grandiose statements on the abilities that it supposedly is going to have, sure, they'll speculate on it. But to try to define a purchasing seeing decisions right now based on hype, uh, I think is just overkill. But anyways, that's just me. I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and and again, like it's not like I'm not excited to have ARM devices uh, come onto the market. I, I think they're great. I think if you've vetted your software stack and that's what you need to use it for, go for it. It's it's really incredible what what it's capable of. But last gen, it feels like a glorified phone chip in computer form. So we'll see what the outcome of Snapdragon X Elite because it should be a whole lot faster. I'm sure it will be much better. And I'm sure that many people will be very happy with it. Heck, I even might be happy with it uh, once I'm able to get it in and review it for myself. But uh, anyways, those are my thoughts on Windows on ARM and my experience with Surface Pro 9 5G. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you want to see more like it. And we'll see you later.